for. And then on your feedback, I could turn that down a little bit because uh, I don't want it to be too obnoxious sounding. So we'll put the symbol in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can do this by MIDI or you can do it by filling it in with the mouse. I'm just doing it with the mouse because not everyone has a MIDI keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that one in. This is going to loop over because I have the repeat step sequencer highlighted. So it's going to loop over it like every, it's going to loop over right here, right in the middle. You'll, you'll notice. See the loop. So I'm going to go ahead and link that to a mixer channel. Open it up. Click Control L on the keyboard. And it's on insert 5 now. I'm going to go ahead and add a reverse symbol in there. This might take me a second. I don't know the timing on it, but we'll see. Go ahead and uh, right click reverse symbol and then send to piano or piano roll. Click piano roll. You might have to get on half step or none for this, depending on how long your reverse symbol is. They're always different too. So we'll see. We, I just wanted to lead into the loop. You'll, you'll notice right here. So I'm gonna have to move it to the right song. Just have to play with it. So it's pretty close to being on beat right there. And that's my whole pattern. If you wanna know how to make these little notes behind it show up, those are called ghost channels. Underneath your piano roll, if you hit a F, which one is it? It's F7 on the top of your keyboard for the shortcut. You'll notice on the top left of that menu, it says Piano Roll Options. Click that, go to Helpers, and then Ghost Channels. Or you can press Alt-V on your keyboard, and it'll pop open. Ghost Channels off, Ghost Channels on. And you'll hear my loop up here. My, sim my, reverse, my reverse symbol leads into the regular symbol, which is right here. And I'm going to go ahead and link that reverse symbol to the same mixer insert channel as the regular symbol because they're similar sounds. Keeping it basic, go ahead and turn it up to channel 5, which is the same one that that symbol was on. Symbol, there we go. And then I have a shaker. You can do what you want. You don't have to add a shaker, but I'm just going to make a basic one. I'm going to go ahead and fill in maybe each four steps. Right click the shaker channel. Fill each four steps, and then I'm going to hold shift and put them off beat. Hold shift and then go to your right arrow on your keyboard and press it twice, and it'll put the shaker off beat a little bit, but it'll sound all right. Turn it down a little bit over here. And you can link that to your mixer channel if you want, if you want to EQ it. So we got a pretty basic beat, but it's banging. No EQs, and it's still banging. So, next thing I want to do is I want to go to my kick. And basic EQ for the kick, you go down, get on your mixer. You can press F9 or click it at the top. I want to go down to the bottom right of the mixer, and you'll notice three sliders and a little graph. That's your, e e your basic built-in equalizer. You can do some basic EQing on it. I'm going to cut the high out of that kick give it some more thump and then I'm gonna go boost around around a little low part of the the bass that's where the kick stands out the most I'm gonna go ahead and do like 80 or something you'll notice there's a change in the kick if you've been listening here we go cuts out some of the high hissing sound in the kick and then we can go do that with the snare too I always I don't always know the the frequency to EQ things at so if you want to have something that analyzes the frequency for you you can do a built-in plug-in parametric EQ2 for Fruity Loops they have that and you can click that and we'll play it I just want to play the snare so I'm gonna go to snare on the mixer and hit S and it'll solo that S on the keyboard so we'll play it so this is a layered snare so it's gonna have a lot of activity going on in it and a lot of frequencies so I'm going to just cut out the low so I'm going to 
click on the one and drag it down right there straight down So, I mean, it's a pretty wide area of activity. I'm just going to give it a boost and mess around with it till I like the sound. That's what you're going to have to do. It's around 240 hertz. I like it a little lower, about 175-ish. Turn it up, turn up the bandwidth. Okay, so I'm going to go around over here. Drag 7 to the right. I don't need that one really. I'm going to take 6 and drag it up around 12,000 hertz. If you don't know about frequencies, just Google EQing or you can look at my blog on my website and I have a few articles on where to boost and where not to boost for different instruments and different drums. Check it out. Save it. It's a good guide. And I boost it around 12,000. I mean, it's always different. Gives it a little more high, a little pop to it. And if you want, you can go ahead and add a reverb. Click the drop down list right here. And I'll just add a default reverb. Go to uh, default. And I don't want it to be too huge. I'm just going to use that one and turn it down on the knob over here. Probably turn it down to like 20 ish. It's a little too much. I like it just to be subtle. So, And then we. If you want to unsolo everything, right click that little dot right there. So it sounds pretty tight. A little subtle effect to it. I'm going to cut off the low on the built in EQ also. Just cut it off a little bit. So it sounds a little better. Go back to the mixer. If you want to mess with the hi-hat, those are pretty simple to EQ. You just cut off the low. You don't always cut off the low because there are some hi-hats that have a bit of low sound in them. Some of those old school vinyl hats. I'm going to boost this one around like 12 or 13,000 hertz here. Not too much of a difference, but sounds a little better in my opinion. And then for the symbol, I'm going to solo that and boost around the same area. I mean, you can add some reverb to it as well. That's what I'm going to do. It already has the echo on it, so it kind of plays a little game in the reverb area. Let's see. I'm going to boost that one a little higher than the hi-hat. Maybe try 14,000-ish. If you notice, it's panned a little bit to the right. So if you want to make it just straight down the middle you can go over here where my cursor is by the built-in EQ there's a stereo separation and there's a panning button on top I'm going to do the stereo separation and drag it to the right and that makes it merged in other words it's mono straight down the middle now you notice this two lines are equal on the peak meter so I'm going to add a little reverb to that I'm going to turn the decay up on that so it drags out a little longer. Three seconds or so is decent. I'm going to turn it down a little bit on there. Just mess with it till however you like it. And then on a shaker, you can cut the low, boost wherever it needs to be boosted. Sometimes it's a little lower on the shakers. <laughs> 